Ugh, stealth games. I went through the what entire is... Hitman 2 just by shooting everybody in the face, and I got the worst score ever. <laughs> but I was good at shooting people in the face! But you made it. Well, and that's the thing, it's like... And it gave you that ability to do that, like... And Elder Scrolls, like, I don't have to be... I don't have to stealth the whole game. Or, you know, I don't have to play this way specifically. Um... I don't like being told how to play the game. Like, you have to do this. Like, I do get really super irritated talking from me cussing the other night. When Assassin's Creed, when you have to freaking follow somebody. <laughs> and it's like, you have to stay in that area to, like, listen to them. Yeah, that's it's every... Like, and, they're, and every... And they do that. And, like, it, there's a ton of missions like that. It's like, you have to you have to be good at sneaking. You have to get good at this very particular skill. Or you cannot progress in the game. And it drives me in. Yeah, absolutely. That's almost like an Ubisoft thing. There's shit like that in Watch Dogs. Ubisoft. I'm glad they finally made a, their little you play like you don't have to do it. I was they were trying to like make that happen. At least you know Microsoft had the you know the site to be like, oh people don't like this, let's not do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, or in the case like with the Watch Dogs launch, where you play is down. So like if it had been mandatory. You know, like it was for PC. Yeah. You're screwed. You can't even play it. That's dirty. Which is, yeah, it's super dirty. On launch day, you've spent the money, you downloaded the game, you boot it up, and you can't play it. It's it's why I don't get into multiplayer only ideas, you know? Like, I'm just nervous about the games taking that, that, uh, that route, you know? Take, like, Titanfall, for example. You know, it just. I don't know. That game's not even big enough multiplayer-wise to be a multiplayer-only game, you yeah, know? That's exactly it. Like, there's MMOs are big enough multiplayer, big enough games that, like, they can justify being multiplayer-only because they've got all this stuff going on. But yeah, like, Titanfall, I mean... It's just the like they're the, lazy. The, 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 <laughs> it was the, the super camp, fucking the lazy. Cam, the campaign is lazy as hell. It's the laziest campaign. You don't have an impact on the campaign. You like you don't fucking matter. You just get to hear it going on. And but of course, you also get to hear the story going on in the background of all the battles you're having. So you don't even know what's going on at the time because you're too busy playing the fucking game. Yeah. And watch the cutscene up there. You know, and being being competitive. Is it possible to be competitive and, and concentrate on the cutscenes going on in the Absolutely. in the top right corner of your screen? That's why, like, when you guys were talking about going the story, at one point, I was like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's like at this point, you have no idea. Oh, nice, dude. And the, you know, that's like certain things where it's like they need to take a step back from like the effect that the internet has on games. You know what I mean? This is like why it's so much fun going back and playing like this in Final Fantasy VII. Is you can just Shit. get lost in a narrative and and really let loose with the game, you know, and just get get completely immersed in it. I feel really lucky, like in um, the Elder Scrolls MMO I'm playing right now. And ESO. The Elder Scrolls. The Elder Scrolls. Yeah. The Elder Scrolls. Uh, Elder. I can. I'm, I'm Elder about Scrolls. That. Slur it. And Elder Scrolls uh, Online. Like, it's fully voice acted, and it's just like DC Universe Online. Because they were fully voice acted, that one little thing alone helped me enjoy uh, the story that's going on a lot more. Oh, they're voice acted. Yeah, it's completely, like, it's 100% voice acted. That's awesome. And I love that. Whereas, like, I tried playing um, World of Warcraft with some buddies, and not only did they never want to, like, know what's going on in the story, <laughs> But, uh, like, I had to read a ton of text. Well, they're just sandbagging their own guys. Yeah. yeah. See, I don't mind reading text, as long as, like, I have time to read it, you know? It was, it was, it was not, it was a lot. Like, every little thing that you do is, it's not like your traditional, like, to me, RPG text. I felt like there was a lot more text. Only, like, text in a game if your character is not meant to speak. Yeah. If, if your character speaks, then everybody should speak. 
What do you mean by speak? Like, like if they're the voice acted? The character that you are is voice acted like Isaac in Dead Space 1 doesn't speak. Yeah. Dead Space 2 he does. So in Dead Space 1, it doesn't bother me when I find things laying around on the ground and I read uh, the hints and everything, like the, the logs. Yeah. But Dead Space 2, I don't want to fuck with that. If Isaac's going to talk, then why not just have... Why don't you just say Have him read it? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. that would be a good idea. They never do that where the main character reads it. They did in Tomb Raider, never mind. Whenever she found logs, they would read it. Oh, really? Yes. That's and it's the person that wrote it would it would they would be the narrator, which I think is the way to do it, you know. Well, I'm very much a fan of games where the main character doesn't talk anyway. Absolutely. If, if it's done correctly. Because like then in, in that situation, one. that's a situation where you are the character versus you're Absolutely. watching the character. Absolutely. You only see the back of his head, and then he puts the helmet on and becomes just this. That's one just of the that best creepy scenes. Creepy breathing. Yes. Absolutely. You know, it's it's it is one of the. The greatest moments in that game when you're, you know, he's, he's like basically just like Isaac suit up and you, you put the helmet on, you know, you're him. I think we had this talk one time with this, like, yeah, silent protagonist versus protagonist who talk. Yeah, I was nervous in Call of Duty when they were going to do that. So, they, like, you know, they brought in Alex Mason, but Mason's such a fucking good character. And that's the case, too. It's like, if you're going to do it and have a character that talks and a character that's not going to be you, you really have to flush out that character. That's what I'm liking what they're doing with uh, Master Chief, like, as of Halo 4. Like, they're adding a lot more depth to the character and, like, his conversations with Cortana. Yeah. Whereas before, it was just like, you're right, Cortana, I am a badass. Like, <laughs> <kill everything."> <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, that has its own charm to it, too, yeah, like, in the, case, in the case of Master Chief, you know. Halo has a campaign? <laughs> <laughs> Halo has an awesome campaign. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay. It was just a joke. At first glance, I hated Halo Three, but wound up wound up coming around on it. But I don't first, like the campaign on Three. I don't like the campaign on any Halo. Three, really. Halo Three probably had the weakest campaign in my opinion. I loved Halo Two, switching between Master Chief and the Arbiter and getting those. Yes, yes, yeah, see, I love Halo Two. I, I really like to do it, and it was unexpected to me. Like I didn't follow the game closely enough to where like I knew how it was all going to work out. So like in Halo Two. When you stumble upon like that Halo, oh. that second Halo nice, installation, dude. I was like, "Holy shit! There's another one. This is awesome. Let's go blow it up." Halo Four was awesome though. Yes, I, I got fucking good at the can the uh, multiplayer on that game. See, I don't know you're playing that. I would have played that with you, dude. I tried to get you to play with me. I, I don't remember what happened. Oh, that guy was borrowing my game. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, oddly enough, Ashley, like, we played, uh, we were over at a friend's house the other day, uh, we were over at, uh, my field student, Tara, uh-huh. you know, they had us over for, uh, dinner the other week, mm, and have some fish. we played Halo, and Ashley loved it. Nice. She loved playing Halo, so I'm thinking, alright. Halo so, is for the gentleman who still enjoys the yesteryear multiplayer games like, uh, GoldenEye. Like, it's, you have a shield... And um, you use wep- like your life and your your equipment and weaponry to help you instead of just you know all sh- strategy. See, I'm gonna have to get tips from y'all on Halo. It's all about working as a team. You send one person in down the hallway to shoot, and then he runs back yeah, before no, he dies. Know, he sends another person in. That, the whole thing. <laughs> that teamwork is super important in Halo's multiplayer. Absolutely. I'm excited for like since die. we're not getting the new Halo this year. Like, as soon as that Master Chief collection comes oh, out... Oh, I'm pre-ordering that shit. Like, I'm, I'm getting a second controller because I'm going to make Ashley play with me, too. Nice. Finally. Is he still alive? I fucking shot you. I don't think you killed that one, man. I shot him. There you went. There we go. I just it's like, that thing will not die. What's this? Um... Yeah, I'm super excited. Like, play all those on Xbox One. Yeah, dude. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I'm gonna be marathoning those for sure. Oh yeah, gonna be fun. Yeah, I'm so excited for Destiny. Yeah, I you know I I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's hope it it is done right. You know, Cause don't lie. Like I I I like Titanfall. It's fun, and I was so stoked for it. But it just it was kind of kind of disappointing. It wasn't quite the game we were hoping for. Yeah, you know. They 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 but you know what they put themselves up on a pedestal there. They made it. They, they came out like, this is going to be the next great thing. Yeah. And it wasn't. I and mean, yeah. it's a great game, but it's not. It is, really yeah. Game. It's like, it's a lot of fun. Just, to me, like, to me, not as fun as Call of Duty. Like, 
I have a little more fun on well, Call of Duty. You never know what the next great thing's going to be. You don't know until after, yeah, like do, a year I, later, yeah. then you realize that was the next great thing. Or just like in the middle of it, you know. It's it's like weird to think like how much Xbox Live has evolved and changed. There's, uh, you know, like even like a social media or is like playing games, you know. Uh, and which which games have, have come out and have been big and and all that from, you know, it, I mean, it's hard to think about, like, all the games since Call of Duty 4. And I remember, like, when I bought Call of Duty 4, I was, like, late to it. But it had only been out a year, you know, mm-hmm. from the 360. And that was, like, 08 when, I, when we got Xboxes. Dylan? Uh, let's see. It's 214, six years ago. I'm 25. I would be like nineteen. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. So like, I mean, in the in in that amount of time, like so much shit's happened in games oh, yeah. that it, it's yeah, it's crazy. And there there have been some good changes, and there have been some like, you know, that shit was not a good idea. Y'all should we were not, y'all about, should not have done that. You know, we were talking about all the the open world games and all the advances made in that but you know if if you like linear games then what i'm more excited about anything else is just the ability to make it most like a movie as possible to where when you're so involved in the story that it it moves you or engrosses you in the same way a really good movie would i feel that way which it will always be different because you're a part of the action it can't be the exact same but that's what i'm more interested in yeah it's the development of stories to a a higher it's taking quality. it's treating the stories a little more seriously you know oh as the structure of lord sadler i have the agent in confinement alive why keep him alive i do not fully understand what the lord's intentions are i would however think he'd keep them separate not confine them together as has been ordered i don't expect louise would trust a stranger but if by chance they did cooperate the situation could get a bit more complicated if for some reason an unknown third party is involved i don't think they'd let, uh, let a chance like this slip by but maybe it's all Lord Sadler's ploy, leaving us vulnerable so that this third party will surface, if they even exist, that is. It's an unlikely possibility, but if a prowler is already amongst us, then our plans could be ruined. I guess the Lord thinks it's worth the risk, if we're able to stop whatever conspiracy is at work. At any rate, it's the Lord's call. We will trust his judgment as always. I think we're coming up on the chapter end, aren't we? Yep. You carry the same blood as us, it seems. Nevertheless, you're an outsider. Just remember, if you become unpleasant to our eyes, you'll face severe consequences. What? Same blood? Leon, I've been able to get some new info that might help you. Fill me in. Apparently, there's a religious cult group involved. They're called the Los Illuminados. Los Illuminados? <laughs> That's a mouthful. Anyway, I had an unexpected run-in with the big cheese of this village. But you're okay, right? Yeah. But he could have killed me, but he let me live. And he mentioned something about me carrying the same blood as them. Whatever that means. Carry the same blood. Huh. Interesting. Anyway, there are more important things than solving riddles right now. You're right. Hurry and find that church, Leon.
angel. If there was a woman who was doing the job that Ada is doing right now, she would be incredibly, incredibly buff. <laughs> Not that little, like, feminine Asian girl, like, attractive Asian girl that they She's go... She's wearing that red dumbass dress. Yeah, she would be, like, wearing the same type of crap Leon is. I'm gonna kill the one in the back. Sexism room. in video games. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, it is pretty rampant. Almost every female character in a video game has ginormous breasts for no apparent reason. There, there was an uh, article on um, IGN about, like, uh, Nintendo's come with this game. What was it, what was it called? It's, oh, my gosh. Let me look it up real quick. Damn, damn, damn. Anyways, basically, like, it's like it's a shooter, but instead of you, like, killing people, you know, you use paint, and you're painting the level, and you're shooting other people and you can turn into a squid and travel through the paint really really quickly what uh, it's really cool looking like all the stuff for it's really cool but the article was just like oh, oh, damn it yeah. damn oh, I was backing was up like, fast enough look at Nintendo they made a shooter that is non-violent uh, with with colorful and female main characters and then it's like and here are your PlayStation and Xbox main <laughs> the shooters and it's two big like it's just two franchises with guys in like almost all black decked out in guns and it's just like it was just really cool like them taking note of like Nintendo is not attacking like they're still doing their own thing and I love that Nintendo is still doing their own thing because we don't need a third console trying to do the same thing everybody these two are doing if one of them would, like if three consoles were doing this they'd go bankrupt they're almost like you know they're they're, they're 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 having business problems. You know what I mean? Who is Nintendo? Yeah, yeah. yeah if Nintendo was putting out the same games. I mean, I wouldn't buy a Nintendo console for. Yeah, I mean Nintendo games. like uh, it was like a couple months ago. It's just like the Wii U is just not selling. Yeah, well the Wii U is a travesty as well. You know what I mean? It's and so it, it's. Dude, I'll be honest. I love my Wii U. I I think it's awesome. I, mean, I can't speak for I don't I don't have a Nintendo you know like I, I know Marcus like you are very biased for Nintendo you like Nintendo you know and I think Nintendo makes great games um, I don't I don't know I think like it's it just depends on I I, I personally I don't like to compare consoles because I, I like them all you know and I like them all because it's just they're very different games and you know it's that to me is like the pain in the ass about. A console having a lock on a certain game is like I hate that there are games on PS4 coming out that like can't play you on. can't play it and like you know like the new Zelda you got to have an antenna for it and at a certain point in time it just gets to be where like you know you know I don't want to have to pick and choose you have and to I don't have, have the money to get them player all. to watch a certain type of DVDs. yes you know what I mean yeah. like it, it's just like I, I want you know. I, I'm sure this is not like a, a universal idea, but I want there to be like one maker of console and then all these other game companies that make for the console. Worry about your software, you know what I mean? Quit selling us three different versions of essentially the same hardware, you know what I mean? Like at a certain point, it's just you're like, everyone's getting a hard on or butt hurt about minute differences in, in hardware that it just the average consumer doesn't notice or. I, you know, I'd been trying. Just doesn't give a shit about, you know. And I'm, I'm saying that with confidence. Of, I'm, I'm that average consumer. I just, I want to pop my game in, and play it. You know. I find that the people who, who are, extremely, extremely adamant that only one system is like the golden one are the same kind of people that are extremely adamant that whatever brand of car they have is the best one, whether or not it was their choice to have that brand. <laughs> You know, it was just within their price range. Like, Chevy is so great. Why is it so great? I don't know. It's just the best. <laughs> I can afford it. It's what it's, I have. I don't. You don't know anything about cars. Neither do I. What do you? Who <laughs> care? It's like, don't offer. A, yeah, don't offer that opinion though. Well, because you don't have that. Like, you don't have all these different cars. You don't have the knowledge on all that, so you can't say yours is the best. And even then, and Tom, you know, that's a great point of that. Oh man, you're just never been as you know me, I like to play a lot of different games. Yeah. You know, and like I want to play all these games, and I just. It pissed me off that, fuck yeah, screw him. Uh, you know, that you just... You can't go back and do that, you know? So exclusivity sometimes... I get, you know, capitalists, you know, 
you know, uh, pig dog reasons why you're doing it. It, you know, it, it makes you marketable, but it just, it's a pain in the ass. And it, to me, it's, it just, it doesn't matter to argue about that stuff, you know, to, because it, it doesn't make one worse or one better, you know, like, I think back when, like, Nintendo got this rep with the with the Wii, the original Wii, being like, oh, well, they make these kiddie games, and then all they have are their first-party titles. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's true, you know, like, that's Nintendo markets towards their first-party titles of your, yeah. your loyalty to those titles, and then the rest of their titles are mainly toward... That well, that kind of like more, active family gameplay, you know what I mean, and that's kind of that's quality. their market. Uh, yeah, and I'm not even sure uh, technically why. I'm, I'm sure there are some people out there that know. Like, I mean, I, I think like hardware wise, it's just like a little. It's not, you know. I, I think like PlayStation is like the the most advanced hardware, yeah. and then Xbox One, and then whatever, and then you know Nintendo. And I think that was the same with the last generation too, where the PlayStation was the most powerful, and then Xbox, and then. And then Nintendo, but it's it, you know there were games for each like that that were amazing, and it's it's I don't know the average I think family just doesn't have the money to pump two fifty for one console, four hundred for another console, four hundred for another console, and be able to get these games. You know, it's it's like you're you're not you know, I probably won't be able to play some of these Nintendo games until like you know yeah they're like it's like seventy bucks for a Wii, and I can just go and get it you know way after the fact. My method. <laughs> oh, yeah.